Okay, for our test project today, opened up a new project window in Easel. And I'm going to go right over here and set my size of my materials. And it's going to be 14 inches on the X axis and it's going to be 11 inches on the Y axis. And I'm going to be using the eighth inch bit. So with that set, I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to type out um, just several different uh, test one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to just uh, pick a variety of text type styles. So I'll be right back. Okay, what I've done is I've selected five different fonts that we're going to be testing. And what I was looking for is a bold test that did not have a lot of very thin lines in it. Because when we're doing the inlay, very thin lines are going to be very difficult to do. And I have one setting off to the side here for Pawpaw that does have a fairly thin line that we're going to play with. And I have a special surprise that we're going to do with this one. And that'll be the last one that we do. But uh, the other thing I'm going to do, again, I'm using an eighth inch bit. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to set the depth of cut to be 0.1 inch. And I'm going to be using the eighth inch down cut bit to be able to minimize the tear out into the wood. Let's... I use bump stops to be able to keep the XY axis in the same place. Because once the epoxy is filled, dried, we're going to come back and do a second carve over the pawpaw. Okay, with this right off the machine, it looks great with that eighth inch down cut bit. I don't even need to do any sanding at all. The one thing I do want to point out, remember I said in the beginning it had a real fine small line that looped through here. Well, it didn't carve that. It didn't carve it here, did not carve it here. Why? Because that line was smaller than an eighth of an inch. So it leaves it out. It can't cut it. And for my test and for the surprise I have, that's okay. But it is something you need to be aware of and look very closely in your designs. Because if that is important, you would need to have switched to a sixteenth inch bit. Alright, next thing, I'm going to go ahead and put about three coats of sealer on this. And what I'm doing is I'm going to paint each of these letters a different color on this one where I'm painting first and I'm going to use the clear epoxy. This is the epoxy that I'm going to be using. It's a five minute epoxy. And once this paint dries, I'm just going to fill this with the clear epoxy and I want to see how the colors react. So the colors I'm just going to put in the red, green, blue, yellow, and the white. And then we're going to repeat that right here with the next one, but in this time I'm going to actually mix the epoxy. So let me get this finished painting. And... Okay, now that I've finished painting, I want to give a quick review. The acrylic paints that I used up here, it did take two coats to be able to completely cover. On the tempera paint, it was a little bit more of a challenge to be able to paint because it did go in a little bit thinner and it did require two coats. But all in all, it still went very well and very smooth as compared to the acrylics. Once this dries, we'll go ahead and start using the epoxy and mixing it in. Okay, one of the things that I've done is finish the first section with just to clear. And I started working on the second one where I mixed the tint in with the epoxy. I have the epoxy poured out here. This is the hardener. This is the resin. And I'm going to take just a little bit of the green. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm going to mix that in with the resin. Now I'm going to mix that thoroughly before I put the hardener with it. Because again, this sets up very, very quickly. Now with that all mixed, I'm going to bring the hardener into it. And mix it really good all the way through. Alright, and with that done, let's go ahead and fill the letter E with the mixed epoxy. There we go. 
I'm finding is with that little bit of tint, it makes it where the epoxy is actually flowing a little bit easier. There we go. We'll get that cavity completely filled up. There we go. I've also noticed that there are a lot less air bubbles. There we go. Lightly touch it. There we are. And that completes the letter E. And I'm gonna okay, we're to the point of the last one. And I'm gonna mix just a tiny bit of white in with this to see how white does. And again, remember, it takes very little pigment or this acrylic paint to be able to change the color of the epoxy. The other thing about it, because the epoxy is clear, when you add the hardener into it, it's not changing the color. It remains the same color as it was, and that's a good thing. So this is being mixed up really well. And I'm going to fill in the two. All right, let's get this two filled in. I think white may prove to be a difficult color, but we're going to find out. I can tell from my first example up here with the clear epoxy, it would appear that you can just see right through it down to the color. And that's really not what I'm looking for. But I want to see the effect once everything is done and sanded to see how it works. And I've almost got it. We're going to need this last little bit. Here we go to fill this cavity completely full. There was a big air bubble underneath there that I was able to pop. We'll use that one. There we go. Looks like that one's just about out of butane. All right, there we go. We'll let that dry. I'm mixing the clear epoxy to put into the test number three with the tempera paint. And I'm finding there's a lot more air bubbles that are coming to the surface. I'm mixing the epoxy in the cups and a drop of the black paint and two drops of alcohol to be able to thin the epoxy. And I wanted to be able to fill the entire section all in one time. It did work well and it smoothed out quite nicely. And after everything has dried and we look at this, test number one, the one is actually kind of opaque and doesn't look good. Test number two actually looks quite good. And test number three, not good at all. A lot of bubbles. Everything else looks good. Okay, after the rough sanding, this is the end results. And again, number three is by far the worst. And now for the surprise. I put the project back onto the CNC machine and ran pawpaw a second time. Now I added the red epoxy. And when that dries, we'll sand it off and we'll see what it looks like. To summarize, test one, where we painted first and then put clear epoxy, looks good. Test two, we used the epoxy with the acrylic paint, looks very good, I like that one. Test three was horrible, where we had the clear epoxy with the tempera. Test four, excellent, painted and mix the epoxy with the tempera, looks very good. Now for the surprise, doing an inlay on top of the inlay, I think turned out fantastic. Thank you for watching today. If you like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for future updates. As always, have fun, be safe, take care now.